Welcome to Excel Business Math Series number 29. Hey, we're in the workbook, Business Math Chapter 3. If you want to download this, go to my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download this workbook. If you're in the class, just go to our Chapter 3 website. Hey, we are going to talk about rate of change, and we're going to start over in the PDFs. And this is the point in the class where most um, people in past classes just tend to go downhill. So we're doing word problems, we're doing percentages, which are hard enough, and now we're going to talk about percentage of change or rate of change, which both mean the same thing. This is decimal, this is percent, and increase and decrease problems. Let's look at our new formulas or amended formulas here, and then we'll go do a simple example. All right. It's, I've tried to present it here, and then we'll look at a simple example to get us off on the right foot, and then we'll do a bunch of examples to try to help us flush this idea out. Now, here's our variables and formulas. We're going to use begin for begin amount, like our stock value at the beginning of the year. So we're going to use the abbreviation begin. Begin amount, starting point. That's also what we used to think of as the base in our uh, percentage formula that we've been using. Then let's think we have a stock value at the end of the year, right? So we'll call that end, or end amount, or end point, or part. Now this end amount, as we know from buying stocks, it can go up or down, right? If you buy a stock for $10, it could go up to $12.50, which would be an increase, or it could go down to $7.50. All right, here's our formula for rate. Oh, but well, wait a second, we already know how to do that one part divided by base. But guess what? The new terms we're going to use for an increase decrease problem or a rate of change problem is end divided by begin. And this this will give us a uh, a rate uh, base that we'll be able to use. We'll multiply it times the original amount and give us the end amount. Now, in the textbook that we use, they just continue to use this. They don't give you this new terminology, but this really is uh, a, a more universally used terminology, end and begin, because we have lots of situations. We have uh, units in stock at the beginning of the month, unit, units in stock at the end of the month. Stock value at the beginning, stock value at the end. Bank account at the beginning, bank account at the end, right? Could go up or down. Amount of change, hey, that's that's real easy, right? If the stock went up to um, went up to 1250 and it started at 12, when we subtract them, we'll get two dollars and fifty cents. That's an increase. If we're talking decrease, right? Here's the begin number 10, and we have 750, so 750 minus 10 is minus 250. We'll talk about that in greater detail, but that's pretty common sense. Finally, the rate of change. Well, you take the the difference, which is the amount of change, right? and divide it by the starting point. And that gives you the, um, the rate, either up or down. Now, let's do a little algebra here, because we're not going to use this formula. We're going to use a different one. Remember from doing fractions, adding fractions with a common denominator. We saw how to go backwards sometimes, because really, when you have n minus begin over begin, right, this begin is the common denominator. So you can break it apart. You could just go, oh yeah, n divided by begin. And then we take our minus, zoop, and we put this over this. Begin minus begin. Well, anything minus, anything divided by anything is really 1. So we can use this formula for rate of change, or as the book says, percentage of change. Now, the, why are we doing it different than the book? Because this is the one you see in the real world. This is the most common formula. Hey, wait a second. Let's know something else. Uh, rate of change. Right? That's just a rate. That's why I've used the word rate instead of percent, because these are related, rate and rate. Right? N divided by begin gave us rate. Well, well, wait a second. Look at this. Rate of change is really whatever this was minus 1. So anytime you know the actual rate, you can just subtract 1, and that gives you the rate of change. Let's go look at some examples in Excel. I have it written out here by hand, too, these two examples we're going to do with rate. Uh, amount of change and rate of change, and then for the decrease problem, rate, amount of change, rate of change. You can look at these here. The nice concluding thing is that there's a green and a red. Anytime you get a positive number, oh, that means increase problem. Anytime you get a negative number, that means decrease problem. Let's go over to Excel and, and flush this out. Here's example number one. 
Now, uh, we have stock value, 10 at the beginning, and at the end it's 1250. Let's do our first formula, which is rate. What is rate? Rate equals whatever the part is divided by whatever the base is. Oh, oh, but, but, but wait a second. We don't want to use that language anymore, so we're going to go equals uh, whatever the end is, the end stock value divided by the begin stock value. Right? So we're trying to relate this new terminology to what we've already done. Whoops, Excel's talking again. All right, so let's see what the rate is. Equals, I'm going to take the end divided by the begin. Oh, 125. Now, why is that useful? Why do we need this? And remember, oh, by the way, we could do percent, right? I'm going to go like this just to get that number. And then I could control 1, and you could do a percent. Um, oh, hey, the fence went up. That means the column is not wide enough, so I'm going to double click right there. Now, why is the rate so important sometimes? S um, why is the rate so important? Because sometimes you know uh, the begin amount and you want to get the end amount. So for us, we, re we remember that the uh, part equals the rate times base, right? Well, for us, and, and in the real world, when you're working out there in business or wherever, in science or whatever, the, the formula you're going to be able to use is whatever the end, if we want to calculate what the end will be, well, we can just take equals the rate times the begin. Notice we've just substituted our, our new words in for part, which is end, and base, which is begin. All right, and then I'm going to type in equal. I'm going to come up here and do that again and see if I can make this. Uh... So let's do it. Equals the rate times whatever our begin is, right? Really what this means is we have 110 plus 25% extra uh, um, of this 10, which gives us what? 1250. All right, now let's, so this is kind of formula number one. This is just how we can use that. Now let's do formula number two, which is amount of change. Amount of change. I was calling it uh, equals uh, amount of change. And that equals end minus begin. And you can put an equal there if you want. All right, so the amount of change, we're going to start, oh, the end, <coughs> whatever the end is, minus the beginning. Should give us $2.50. Now, finally, we have one last formula. In fact, we could even uh, go like this and add some color. By the way, the keyboard shortcut to turn off and on the ribbon is Control-F1, or you can right-click, uh, minima, uncheck this. I've never done it. But uh, uh, control F1 is the one to toggle that on and off. Let's add some color here just to show us that that's uh, one of our formulas. And I'm going to use some borders here. This was our second one, right? And I'll sl select this slightly different color, maybe this uh, blue one. And finally, now we'll have our, our third formula. I'm going to control, uh, and let's add some color, maybe a light like yellow or something. I don't see any light yellow. Oh, more colors. There's a light yellow right there. And then something like that. All right, I'm going to turn this uh, ribbon off so we can see a little bit better here. Uh, so amount of change. This is rate of change. And what does that equal? Our formula is always going to be end divided by begin. That means where we ended up divided by where we started, minus 1. And uh, let's do that. Equals, what was the end amount? Right there, divided by where we started, minus 1. All right, you ready for the answer? 0.25. Now, rate of change, the book says percentage of change, so what do we do? Equals this, and then control 1, and percentile, add the percentage format. Now, do you see a relationship between rate and rate of change? Well, look, n divided by begin minus 1 
Oh, our formula was up here was just n divided by begin, right? No minus 1. So watch this. To get rate of change, anytime you know the, the rate up here, it's easy to get the, the rate of change. We'll do um, a second formula. Actually, I'll add a fourth color here. Let's see if I can find a nice, there's an orange and then uh, some borders. All right. There we go. I'm going to, uh, let's see, just type it equals rate of change. And that's going to be what? Whatever the rate is minus 1. Because see, this is equal to the rate. So we can just highlight this part right here and type rate, right? Rate minus 1. Let's check and see if this works. Equals, oh yeah, our rate minus 1. I hope this works. I have my fingers crossed. Boom, boom, ding, ding, ding. And of course, we could do our same little trick there. Uh, equals this, and then Control-1 and add some format. All right, so that's uh, rate of change. Uh, this is not decrease. This should say increase. Uh, this is our first example. All right, uh, so that's for increase. Now, I want you to notice before we move on to our decrease, and we'll go over to the PDFs and look here. One memorization trick is, see how the N comes first when you write the numerator and then denominator for a rate? Then for amount of change, see how the N comes first, then you subtract the beginning? And then again here for rate of change, we have our end is the first thing we write as we write it left to right like this, end divided by begin. So what, get confused from the form is just remember they all kind of start with end. That's just a memorization trick. All right, let's do our decrease problem. All right, we're going to do the same uh, setup. Guess what? I'm just going to copy all of this right here. Watch this. Control C. Control V. And then watch this. If I want this formatting right here, I highlight that little chunk right. Oh, and this needs some uh, some borders. But watch this. I can highlight this whole thing right here and use my what? My painter, uh, format painter, which is copies just formatting. And then notice it's a rectangle like this. If you click in the top right here, it applies it just the formatting. All right, now we know our rate is part divided by base. Oh, no, 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 no. We want to use our n divided by begin. So you ready? Equals, oh, this is a decrease problem. Our stock value went down. So that divided by this. Guess what? If this is lower than this, when you do the division, it's going to be less than 1. So 0.75 is our rate. Compare that to this. Since we went up, we needed a value bigger than 1. So this, of course, is uh, uh, 0.75, which is less than 1, which means we went down. Equals this, and then we'll do our little formatting trick. Uh, control. Oh, it's already formatted, right, because we got we copied when we did that uh, format painter. It copied the format. Now let's do our part, which is, oh yeah, our end value. From this, this is our rate, can we calculate our end value? And why is this useful? Because sometimes you know you have this begin value and you're estimating that things are going to go down and at the end of the year it will only be worth uh, 0.75 or 75 percent of what you started with, right? And so that's why this formula here, end equals rate times begin, is so useful. Equals our rate times our begin. We better get that 750, and we do. Now, what is the amount of change? Now, here's the bummer, right? When you have a decrease, if it's a stock value, then you're all bummed out. But hey, if it's inventory, like you're selling inventory, then it's good to have less at the end of the year because that means you sold some. All right, you ready? Equals the end. Remember, the end comes first minus the uh, begin value. Now, here's the trick. Ooh, what's that? We better go look because that's formatting control one. If you don't like these parentheses, which is from accounting, then please select um, this one right here. Right? That means minus. And that's what we'll do. Minus 250. Now, here's the trick. Since we have one formula that will always calculate amount of change, the end minus the beginning, whenever this comes out negative, you know you're dealing with a decrease problem. All right, let's try our rate of change. And we're going to use this formula equals our end amount 
divided by our begin amount minus 1. Now let's think about that. We got we already know that this part right here is 0.75. So less than 1 minus 1 going to come out negative. So this also will, um, when this comes out negative, when you're calculating rate of change, you know that you have a decrease. means it went down by 20, uh, 0.25 or in our formula here, minus 25%. Finally, uh, to see this relationship is very helpful. Uh, we know up here rate, n minus begin. We already got 0.75. Well, if we know all that rate, we don't even have to bother calculating this. We just go equals whatever our rate is we already calculated, minus 1. And in some of the tricky homework problems and on the test, uh, you'll be given uh, a problem like this, where you know this and you need to figure out the, the, the rate of change, 0.25. And we could do our same formula here, minus 2.5. All right, so that's kind of a, an introduction to the rate of change. Uh, study it, think about it. Um, the relationship between all these formulas here and this sheet, ROC formulas, and over in the PDFs, study it. It's uh, good so you can do well in the class. Hey, but even better, it's good because this is so common in the real world. All right, uh, we'll see you uh, next video when we'll actually do a couple uh, examples over here of rate of change. See you then.